secret mission. We didn't know where we'd be. Hi friends, today I'm talking about my song called The Arrest of Motor Vessel Ernestina. Um, in 1985, I was on board HMCS Iroquois at the time. It was a Canadian warship. We were alongside in Dartmouth and we were ordered to go to sea. Um, we had no idea why we were going to sea. We were just sent home to get our gear for, um, that would last us for two weeks. So the whole crew went home, got our clothing, our uniforms, and we headed back to the ship and we departed to go to sea. Um, we didn't know what exactly we were going to be doing um, until we got past Shabakto Head in Halifax Harbor um, and heading out to sea. We were told that we were going to um, uh, possibly arrest a ship that was transferring hashish to another ship. This ship, the motor vessel Ernestina, was followed all the way up the coast um, and uh, just off of Sable Island, Nova Scotia. Um, is where we were going to do our work. We, uh, we made our way out there and we um, uh, found out where the ship was and um, because there was aircraft who were tracking it and we ended up um, going alongside the ship and the RCMP arrested the crew um, in the early morning, I believe it was 24th of May, 1985. And um, the ship was sailed back to Halifax by what's called a prize crew. So they sent over um, different trades to be able to run the ship, bosuns, electrician, marine engineers, and things like that. And of course, some officers and the RCMP. And uh, so the ship was arrested and also it was the mother ship that unloaded um, 14 tons of hash to another ship called the Lady Shirelle, which was then arrested in um, Lockport, Nova Scotia after she got alongside. So um, that is what the song is about. I hope you enjoy it. Another way, warm hair, do you love it? Heard it all before by now, again and again. The lines of a light just there, who's right, who's wrong, it's the only light you'll know. Oh 
Well, JM, uh, thank you so much for uh, joining me today, and we get to talk about your music and your military service. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time out to talk to me. No, thank you for having me. I think this is awesome. No problem. Um, so can you tell me about your mili military career? Like, what was what was your job? What did you do? And where you were posted to and deployments, um, things like that? Yeah, for sure. So uh, um, I uh, so I'm a, a signal operator by trade. So I, I spent most of my career actually as a SIG up, and uh, uh, I worked. I was posted in uh, Volcarche. Uh, I was posted in uh, Petawawa, Kingston, and uh, Gagetown. So those are the bases that I've been part of, and nice. then I have a yeah, a uh, little variety here, you know. And uh, I. Um, uh, you know, and then I spent most of my career on the green side of my trade. So the SIG up is very, uh, you know, broad. So you, mm -hmm. you, you can have uh, like guys with the same trade, but with different, um, you know, uh, working with different uh, organizations and stuff. So mine was on the green side. And uh, and yeah, and I have uh, two missions uh, in Afghanistan, uh, one in 2004 and uh, one in 2010. So, so yeah, that's it in a nutshell about the, the military career. Well, you know, uh, I'm sure everyone says this, but, you know, as a veteran myself, I thank you for your service because, uh, you know, those were some uh, pretty big deployments that you went on. And, um, you know, I'm sure most Canadians appreciate your service. Well, thank you. And thanks <laughs> to you as well. <laughs> no problem. Um, so did uh, your military career influence your songwriting at all? Um, I'll say uh, yes and no. Um, because, um, you know, I spent roughly 20 years in the military and, uh, so it did have an impact on who I am today. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, uh, the people I met, uh, the life experiences, uh, you know, the baggage, the scars and, uh, and all that stuff. So, uh, but specifically writing music about the military, no, but it's, it's all interconnected somehow in, in my brain and my heart, you know what I mean? So, um so yeah so the the short and uh and the short of it is yes and no so see for me uh, i i think i'm a natural storyteller so i've done some um uh i did a few songs about some things that happened while i was in the military um but nothing bad just stories like you know uh actually two of them are about floods on different submarines. So I got a lot of my influence for songwriting from, from some of those experiences. So. Yeah, no. And music is a powerful way to express those stories and, and emotions. And uh, so. And they'll last longer than we will. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so did you actually write any songs while you were still in the service? No, so uh, the the funny thing is that uh, when I was in service, I was pretty much the furthest thing uh, of being a musician, and I had no idea that uh, I had that in me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So there's no no thought about music back then. I I always enjoyed music, but I was never uh, a musician or like it was not uh, that part of my life was not uh, at all. Uh, you know, in in doing music, so. Did you play guitar before, though? No, uh, nothing, nothing. I, I, you know, when I was a kid, and and I uh, might get through uh, to uh, Jesus, we, we might get to that later. But uh, when I was a kid, uh, I, you know, I had to piano lessons and and violin mm -hmm. a little bit, very young. But yeah, I never played guitar. It's never, it's never occurred to me until way, way later, near mm -hmm. the end of my career. So yeah, yeah. Wow. When did you first have um, an interest in music as a whole, like as a fan or, or um, you know, about um, going to concerts or any of that kind of stuff? Well, music was always a big part of my life. Uh, I was kind of surrounded by it uh, with my family because they're, they're all uh, musical, right? And uh, But I was always a fan of music. Uh, you know, as a kid, teenager, I, I, I would be into all sorts of stuff, like very... Uh, a lot of variety actually mm -hmm. uh, you know i was not stuck in in one style of music uh like i even listened like as, as a young teenager to classical music uh, mm -hmm. jazz uh, the crooners uh 
you know, French rap, uh, grunge, metal, you know, movie soundtracks, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I was listening to everything that, you know, that, that were, that was uh, uh, music to my ears, basically, yeah. you know, yeah. so I didn't limit myself to a specific, but yeah, I was definitely a, a fan of music, you know, it's, it's, it was always a big part of my life. Yeah. So, and music really helps you get through some of the bad times. Oh yeah, and then uh, the bad times, the good times, and uh, you know it gets you through. Uh, it, uh, you need motivation to go work out, or motivation to go on patrol, or you know yeah. what I mean. All those, mm -hmm. you know, music is what would we do without it? Right? Exactly. So yeah. Um. So you did mention that you were raised in a musical family. So um, you had uh, uh, I I I believe your mother plays the violin. Um, I saw her in the video. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, like I mentioned, uh, my my family was very musical, and it starts all the way back to my grandfather. So, um, uh, he uh, he was kind of a crooner style in the forties, fifties. You know, doing uh, covers of like Frank Sinatra's and uh, Tony Bennett and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, very popular with the ladies back yeah. then. And so, uh, and as you mentioned, my my mother is a professional violin player. She she wow. plays for the uh, yeah, symphonic orchestra, and then she's uh, she's a, an amazing violin player. Uh, two of my brothers are multi instrumentalists, so they play all kinds of instrument, percussion, guitars, uh, uh, and uh, my uh, younger brother plays piano and he he sings, has a beautiful voice, and my sister the same. She sings, she has a beautiful voice, and I was kind of a late bloomer mm -hmm. in the sense that I. I thought that was like the black sheet of music of the family that I did not have this gift mm -hmm. that all my siblings and my parents had. So it never occurred to me, you know, it never, at that time, it never occurred to me, but uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of my background. So, and I, I remember always being, uh, you know, uh, not sad, but I was, you know, we, 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 were, uh, we would get together at Christmas or, you know, gatherings, family gatherings, and they were all jammed together and sing together. And I was kind of like just watching. I was like, well, <laughs> I didn't get that piece of the pie. You know what I mean? So, yeah, but, but yeah, no, very musical family. Uh, nice. My father, also, you know, uh, uh, plays music and he actually was writing song uh, back when I was a kid. Like, I, I remember he used to bring me to this, this guy's studio and I would play like, uh, Super Nintendo while, while he was uh, doing his thing at the mm -hmm. studio so he was writing songs uh, for this artist so they were all working together they had a producer this 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 singer and then he was writing the lyrics for the music for this guy mm -hmm. and uh, so he would bring me there so I think that subconsciously uh, you know it, it was doing its work in mm -hmm. my head yeah I mean? yeah that's awesome so, yeah. to grow up in that environment yeah, I think that I did not notice, uh, you know, when we're young, we don't mm -hmm. realize the, the chance that we have, uh, you know, but uh, I was, yes, I was very lucky and uh, yeah. that to be imparted by by all this, you know, so, mm -hmm. so yeah, and, and, and obviously, like I said, it, it just uh, came to me way later in life for me, so, but it was. It must be fantastic was, having your mother play on your songs. Oh yeah, like it's so special, you know. My my mother and my brother playing with my family sometimes, and it's no, it's very special, and uh, and uh, I'm very privileged, you know, yeah. that my mom would do that, and she, I think she's enjoying it too, and you know, so it, it is a special moment, definitely. Moms are proud of their sons. Yeah, yeah, they are. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Uh, so, what was the first song you ever wrote? Um, so the first song I ever wrote was, uh, it's a song called, uh, taken away. So, uh, we haven't recorded it yet. It's uh, it's one of those, uh, I don't know how, like it's been, it's been lingering for years, but mm -hmm. we want to get it right. I think it's a powerful song. Uh, and especially in the state that I was when I wrote it, you know, I, I didn't even know I was a songwriter back then. And I just, you know, I, I, I with the limited knowledge of guitar and, and and you know songwriting that i had it just mm -hmm. came out right and it, and it turned out to be a very powerful song you know when you're you're in those dark moments and you know those the best songs are written then right so yeah but yeah that was my first song and it's it's actually not out yet but it's we're working on it you know we we 
we had to do a few step backs and so we want to get it right well i really look forward to hearing it and when it's out i i know i'll see that it's out that um maybe we could uh, talk again about it about it you know dive deep into that song for you and uh and talk about it a little yeah, bit yeah oh, i'd love to i'd love to um so I always like to ask this question about what people's musical influences are, because like you mentioned before about how, you know, you'd listen to classical and crooners and things like that. But like, what are your influences today? Who do you listen to today? Oh, gosh, uh, today. Uh, I don't like I, I, I think that I think that everybody kind of gets stuck in their era in a mm -hmm. way, you know, like, you're from the 70s a lot of the times you're going to listen to 70s stuff 80s yeah. 90s mm -hmm. i'm more of a 90s kid so you know the the grunge scene so i still yep. go back to those you know uh, chris cornell and nirvana mm -hmm. Alice yep. chains Pearl jam and uh, you know i could go on and on so those those are my go-to you know when i yeah when i want to nostalgic and yeah uh, so i still listen to the old stuff uh i don't listen to a whole lot of new stuff i i like instrumental music i like uh mm -hmm. you know uh, listen to the guy playing guitar like yeah uh instrumental uh i i also like uh, folk music uh, mm -hmm. i'm, I'm kind of lately i'm kind of into the norse folk music i think it's really really cool uh so so basically i love everything instrumental i love uh, other cultures music uh arabic music i so I I I, lo I love it all, and and like I said earlier, it's more of a whatever is music to my ears, you know, uh, I, I, it's my go-to. And uh, but there's always a special place in my heart for the, for the grunge scene. Basically. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's you know I, I get it because like you know I I was uh, I was born in 1963, so you know I have I have music that you know, I'll all of a sudden come across on something in YouTube and see, wow, I, I forgot how much I love that song. Like, you know, um, uh, and we've been finding um, some amazing cover bands that we really like to watch on YouTube that are doing spectacular jobs on some of these songs. And it's really keeping the songs of our generations alive, you know, by them doing that. And uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. And you said about oh, the I Norse folk music. Well, you kind of look like a Viking, so that would make sense. <laughs> well, people say that, you know, the beard, hair, uh, the midlife crisis look, like, I guess. That, that <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of veterans get, you know, uh, yeah. we leave them there, they're like, fuck it, you know, I'm, I'm just letting it grow. You know. Well, you know, the, the Norse uh, people, um, they influenced uh, our country huge because, um, you know, uh, Normandy in France... So that was made up of the Norman, which were Vikings, and then they populated a lot of Quebec. They they were they're the ones that came to uh, North America, you know, to set settle it. So it's really interesting. I've read quite a bit about that. Yeah, and there's a there's a kind of a a, a link also with you know the 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 real Vikings. If you look at this mm -hmm. way, you know. Because I, I used to work, I worked at, in, in in some operations with the Norwegians. Yeah, uh, is that how you say it in English? The Nor the Norwegians. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. W. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I did work with those guys, and they were amazing, amazing guys. Very professional, and uh, like I still talk to some of them to this day. So uh, yeah. you, I've I've always been attracted to that culture. Anyway, yeah, it's a it's a really cool culture. Um. Yeah, yeah. What projects do you have in the works right now? Um, right now, so uh, I'm working with my cause. He's my producer, and uh, I'm very lucky to have him. Very mm -hmm. lucky to have met him, and uh, he's yeah. always, you know, pushing me forward because uh, I'm the kind of guy like I need that once in a while. I think that every artist would get into this dark place of why the fuck am I doing this shit and why yeah. why I don't. And so he's really good to me, and. So basically, we're always working on the next songs, the next project. We're always trying to go forward, uh, a step forward, even if it's a small step. Mm -hmm. uh, like, so the next song, the, the next recording, the next video, uh, I am really enjoying playing live. So that's something that I'm always looking forward to, especially mm -hmm. this time of the year, like in the spring. I uh, 
So I, I, I love to go play in cafes and pubs, uh, festivals. Uh, and my favorite thing to do is busking. So I just mm -hmm. I love, love going on the street and just open my guitar case, whatever happens, happens. And I just like, uh, I just play. Right. And, and also I have this project with uh, artist uh, Richard Flynn. So he's a painter that I'd met uh, uh, serendip uh, serendipitously. Jeez. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, we, we've been working together and, um, and, and doing some uh, music slash. So as I play live, he's, he's painting. So it's like a, a double, double thing happening for the audience. So they can, they get to listen to some music and, and see this, this amazing artist paint live yeah so we're, we're doing this this summer and i'm really looking forward to it so that is amazing that yeah, is really yeah, amazing no I'm, I'm very 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 privileged uh and he's actually one uh, the artist that did my portrait that i i sometimes i use as a uh like whether it's a like a promo when i go play somewhere it's just a, mm -hmm. a portrait of me that i'm playing guitar and that he had done while i was playing and i didn't know that yeah. he was doing that right? and then he gave it to me after and i was blown away you know like it's uh, anyway so this what this is what started the, that relationship and that uh, cooperation with uh, this this artist so nice that's really awesome yeah. um can you tell me about land alliance how long have uh you had this group and um uh where do you m mainly perform with them so Land of Lions is the name of my act. And uh, I don't like to call it a, a group or a band because it, it's not really because it, it's funny how things happen or, or just, you know, the turn of events and mm -hmm. Land of Lions. I, 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 I see this more as a, a collaboration. OK, it's a collaboration of many artists, many people, whether they're friends, family, uh, musicians that I've met along the way that that just happened to either play with me or like record parts of songs or parts of my songs like my mother is a great mm -hmm. example my brother mm -hmm. is another example other veterans that you can hear on uh my my recordings and so it's it's kind of a collaboration and uh, of of many people that i was so lucky to to uh to have met you know in my musical career short musical career mm -hmm. to this to this day but uh so yeah land alliance is is I think uh, the best way to describe it is is a collaboration, and and like I said, uh, sometimes I'll be I'll be playing with uh, another guy, and sometimes I'll be playing with my brother or stuff. So it's I try to to play with uh, other people as much as I can. Mm -hmm. So, well, that's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, in a nutshell. All right. So your song "One Path" it's a very powerful song um uh can you tell us uh what the song is about um so in a nutshell so the song is kind of about uh a, a, it speaks of a uh, spiritual awakening and growth uh while observing life and uh and it's uh contradictions you know mm -hmm. uh letting go uh, letting grow you know and uh, so yeah in a nutshell that's that's kind of like uh, the main idea behind behind the song so it's a great song. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, I really like it. And since we're on that subject, um, the video for the song, which we watched uh, just before this interview, um, is very well done. It, 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 it is really well done. It really tells you a story and, and the images in the video are just spectacular. So what concept were you going with with this particular video? Um, honestly, I kind of had an idea... But as you know, like as musicians, artists, you know, uh, we, we always leave a little bit of space for the spontaneous. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew kind of I was I was finding interesting because so first of all, I coach hockey, right? I coach uh, female competitive hockey. I nice. know I don't look the part. Yeah. I, it's like people like, really? That's weird. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it just happened. You know, my, my daughter was playing hockey and I just, you know, uh, it's it's a total a different story long story but i ended up being a, a head coach of a, a female hockey team right and and i feel very honored privileged yeah uh, to be one and and you know uh share a chunk of life with these these young girls young women and but anyway so back to the video so i thought it was um 
uh, it was interesting. Uh, and I was kind of inspired to, to kind of show uh, the meaning of the video through the eyes of a woman. And, uh, you know, and so I, I thought about including some of the, the, the girls in my hockey team that I coach and, and giving them that, that opportunity to be a part of a music video. You know, and I, that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of cool. I thought I, I would have thought it would have been cool if I would have been, you know, part of that. And, you know, I got to include my, uh, my daughter, my daughter's part of the video, my sister uh, drove all the way down just for the shoot video. And, uh, but yeah, it was, the, the concept was more like, um, you know, uh, we thought about uh, seeing it through the eyes of a woman and an, an, an older woman looking back and, and looking at herself as a young girl growing up and seeing all those things and, you know, and, you know, so it, that, that was kind of the main idea and the rest, like, as we shot the video, it just unfolded, you know, mm -hmm. and, and we just with the flow and, um, yeah, and I, I was also served by by the great skills, you know, of Mike, my producer, who's also a videographer. Yeah, uh, he's a videographer, and also um, I had met uh, Ryan Boyko, who's a uh, Canadian actor uh, slash director, and uh, um, so again, a, a series of events. Very lucky to have met him, and we became friends. And then he's been helping me doing music videos. He's actually having a lot of fun doing it. You know, it's something different that he can, you know, uh, dip into. And so I was, yeah, I was really lucky to have those those guys available and just work with me in that video. Uh, so, so yeah. I really liked how um, at the one uh, part of your video where you're sitting and driving the bus and then it pans to the young ladies and they are singing the different lines of your song. I thought that was, that was just spectacular. Because it yeah, showed no, it, their commitment, like they believed in your song. Yeah, I I, I think so, and I I was very uh, lucky for their involvement, and you know, like they were they were amazing. They were so, but that's one of the part, like that's one moment that it just was spontaneous. Hey, how about we do this, you know? And and that was very cool. And we were we were uh, everybody was participating in the ideas, you know. Hey, we should do this, and how about that? And and it was a beautiful day. It was completely beautiful, and then I, I cherished those those moments. And uh, you know, and I realized in the process that I found that it was so difficult to get access to a school bus. So I don't know what it is. It was like I tried many phone calls, and it was, it's another story. But like I, I was lucky to have this bus there to 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 shoot that video. Yeah, yeah. Well, it turned out really well, and it's a very powerful video. And um, yeah, uh, my partner and I we both really love it. So um yeah um well we had a great chat here is there anything else you would like to talk about that maybe i might have missed upcoming uh, shows no, or anything no i think uh i think that was great i think uh and and i'm gonna say that you know i'm really uh really happy uh, uh to have done this interview but I, I think that what you're doing is amazing and 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 and, and interviewing veterans and what they're doing post-military is also amazing because you know, we, we, when we are, we are in the military, we, 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 we kind of uh, get on with the program. Like we, we give a part of ourselves and we play the game, you know, mm -hmm. for 20 years, How, yep. however, mm -hmm. years, you know what I mean? So, and then when you leave, I found it so interesting that so many veterans, you know, they, they all have this gift about mm -hmm. something that you didn't know about when you, you were with this guy, this girl, uh within the military and then you see them after and they're doing something completely out of the box out of the blue like i didn't know you could do that like i didn't know you could paint i didn't know you could uh work with your hands and you know so i found it so interesting and, and so amazing that you're doing that and that hopefully like by through your your podcast that that other veterans will be inspired to uh you know uh get in touch with their artistic side mm -hmm. or whatever right so i think it's so interesting so thank you for doing oh this. no problem i think it's really important you know um to uh reach out to to veterans like you and other veterans that um like you know our my main thing is music but you know like like people doing all the other things woodworking um you know our, our artistic things and but i think that we really need to reach out and spread the word because like 
this is going to be a revolving door until we're gone. Like people are going to come in, do their time, then leave. And then they're going to say, now what? You know, so um, if they can come back and look at this video and say, wow, those guys did it. Maybe I can do it too. So, you know, that's why that's why I'm doing it. I I, I like to help people and tell people stories and, and, and give other people their voice to tell their stories, you know, so. Yeah, well, that's amazing. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And um, I'm going to have all your contact information for people that want to get in touch with you or want to listen to your music. I'll have it at the end of this uh, video um, with your Spotify and everything. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we can come back and do a follow up um, after your next release. I'd love to. Sounds great. Okay. Thank you.